Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we are going to be assessing the thrips damage that has gone on in my collection. So if you haven't seen the last couple of videos of mine, I had a thrips infestation and I can't say it was like really bad, but it was definitely like largely in this area and I have also found them over here and in my greenhouse cabinet. So I guess actually I just pointed to like every part of my collection pretty much. So it, I guess it was pretty widespread. <laughs> We're just gonna do a post thrips houseplant update and just kind of take the temperature on my collection and yeah, see how things are. We're going to start off with the wall because this is where majority of my plants are. I treated everything here the last time I treated was two weeks ago. So I did three treatments of Captain Jack's dead bug brew on everything and that seemed to have gotten rid of the problem. Now I'm very open to doing beneficials still. I did talk about how I ordered beneficials, but I never actually made it past the payment page because I was like, if I'm gonna be using Captain Jack's, I kind of want to wait. So I have the stuff still. <laughs> Okay, baby noises included in this ep in this video. Anyway, I have them in my cart, but I have not pressed order. This is my Philodendron Splendid, which did have thrips. And... <laughs> okay. <laughs> and during the treatment process, it actually put out this new leaf, which is really pretty. It's still hardening off. And I am expecting it to get to at least this size, if not a little bit bigger, but maybe it won't. We will see. Maybe the thrips kind of stunted it, but it doesn't look like there's any damage on this leaf besides maybe a little bit right here. There's a little something in that little bottom corner. But otherwise, the plant looks exactly how it did before. I'm not seeing a ton of damage that wasn't there before. It did have some sap back here, which used to kind of make little, like, I don't want... I guess they're like stains, but you can see there's just some sap and it leaves marks on the leaves, it kind of burns it. That's been happening with this plant and I try to wipe it off when I can, but I don't always get to it. So she's definitely recovered and doing a lot better. This is my, what is this one called? This is my Balloenum. It killed off a new leaf before it actually came out and it took forever for it to put out new growth. But in this whole process, since probably because I was watering it more often, it ended up putting out this new leaf. So it's kind of starting over. It had to, it kind of had to create a new like growth point. So it took a lot longer, but it looks cute and hopefully it will be a nice size. Not sure exactly because it is starting over. It might be a little one, but hopefully we'll get one that's around this size. My Albo Syngonium was looking a little bad for a little bit because I do think that this one had the thrips, but it's looking so much better and I took off all of the leaves that were ugly and now we have just a nice smattering of variegated leaves and it's growing really tall again, which is sweet. So we will see. I might end up like chopping this and then planting it back in here. Let's say Albo Monstera A is doing really well. It has this new growth here. So I recently chopped it as we saw in a video, chopped it right here and it put out this leaf, which immediately had a fenestration, which I was really excited about. And then now this one, which is the biggest leaf that it's had in a really long time. And there's no fennies on it, but it does have just the most beautiful markings. I've been getting photos from um, people who have babies from this Monstera Albo A, and they are so, so pretty. Like every single one of them has just the most beautiful coloring. This plant just, man, I got so lucky with this plant. Um, as you can see, all of these older leaves have really nice coloring too. There was a lot more of this like white sections and as you can see that has perished, but the rest of the leaf honestly looks pretty good besides that. But there was some thrips damage. I think a lot of this was thrips damage, but generally it's still looking pretty healthy. It does have a few leaves down here, which are somehow still around. <laughs> um, I was going to do another chop on this, but I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to just let it go and see what it does. And if this piece eventually starts putting off really big leaves, I will chop it again because once it reaches the top of this plank, I was always going to chop it because I don't want the plant to be bigger than that. I kind of wanted to cap out the growth at that point just because I didn't want to have 
this like massive plant where I wouldn't have space for it. There were several plants that I just left outside for a number of days in basically full sun, unfortunately. It, that was pretty silly of me, but you can see this one got some sunburn and there's also probably some thrips damage in that, but it's doing pretty well. Like all things considered, it is just a bit sunburned, but I do, yeah, we got some new growth down here, which is great. Super excited about that. Okay, so my Thai Constellation received a lot of damage from thrips and I ended up just like cutting off pieces that looked like it was maybe harboring eggs and stuff like that. And also this is a piece that I cut out. Um, you honestly can't really tell, but anyway. Thrips damage on this plant looked largely like this and I could just see that there were like black dots on the brown sections. And that's kind of how I figured it out in addition to seeing like the adults and the larva like crawling around on the plant. But she appears to at least be recovering enough to, <laughs> she appears to be recovering enough to at least put out a new leaf. So that is on the way. I'm assuming that will take a couple weeks, but that's exciting. We have Monstera Albo B, which was actually gifted to me from someone a long time ago. This was my first Albo Monstera. And it's been a long journey, but she has been putting out just the most beautiful leaves. This one has a bit more of the dark green in it rather than this one, which has more of like a light green tendency. And this one is also putting out a new leaf. So that's really exciting. This one I would probably also keep capped around the top of this plank, but I do have some extra planks that I would consider using instead of this one. We'll just have to see. This one has a little bit more compact growth and it's definitely like looking better than my other one. So I don't know. I might let this one get tall. We'll just have to see what I think long-term. I do have space to have another long plank, um, but yeah, we'll just have to see. I haven't had to broach that situation yet because it just hasn't, it's a little bit of a slower grower than my other elbow. This is my Philodendron Glorious and definitely has some thrips damage. I am assuming that this is thrips damage through here, but it is putting out a new leaf, which is great. I did chop this one when I was pregnant. I was like chopping my plants up <laughs> and I ended up giving the cutting to Nicole. Where is the chop? Oh, it's right here. I should check in with her and see if that plant is still alive, but anyway. It got chopped right here, and then right after the chop, it put out this, which is really small, then it put out this, and now this. And is that, I think that's a fungus knot. I hope it's a fungus knot. That is pretty much like the update on anything super intriguing over here. A lot of these plants are just chugging right along and didn't have signs of having thrips, like a lot of these up here on the wall didn't have signs that they were infected, but I still treated them just because they are all in this area. But again, I found most of the thrips down here. So it was just important that I treated everything just in case. But down here, this is a plant that I got from the Equigenera pop-up and it is a, Ploma a Philodendron Plomanii and Philodendron Pastazanum cross. And you guys, I was just certain that this plant was gonna die. <laughs> because it looks terrible. It just hangs really low. These leaves are really, really floppy, like no matter how often I water them. But recently this growth point was starting to look a bit plumper and it's now putting out a leaf, which I'm so excited by. I'm curious to see how big it will be and like what it'll look like, but I'm glad that this one's doing good because my Philodendron Mamii actually perished due to the thrips and I'm sad about that. But since I have this plant, I'm not as sad about it. So it kind of replaces my like big leaf Philodendron philodendron vibe. So yeah, we will see what this leaf ends up looking like. And I'm just a lot more optimistic about the health of this plant now that it is putting out a leaf. Okay. Now over here on our new shelf corner, I just cut off two leaves from this falcatum and it put out this leaf in the process of treatment. Look at how beautiful that tree is, by the way. It's totally stealing the show right now. So this is the newest leaf and it does not appear to have anything on it, but I'm going to switch to my little macro lens on my phone to show you what those leaves look like that I cut off. Which by the way, I'm gonna show you my little macro lens. I got this off of Amazon and it actually helped me to 
figure out that I did have thrips because although they are like visible to the naked eye, it's not as easily seen and using something like this can kind of like confirm any suspicions you might have. So it just latches on to your camera like this. It looks like that. Let's see if we can get Leo's little snoot. <laughs> My dogs don't sit still long enough for it to like fully Hey, hey, let me, let's show him your snoot. <laughs> Hold on, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this shot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you get the idea. It also has a little attachment that you can screw on that makes it a wide angle. This isn't like super necessary if you have an iPhone that has wide angle, but if you'll notice the iPhone, when it does do wide angle, it can tend to diminish the quality. So if you wanna do wide angle without ruining the quality, um, this is cool, you can see. It's now a wide angle. Anyway, just a little bit of um, technology corner, but I'm going to start recording and show you these leaves under this because I am actually curious to see if this is still thrips damage, like ongoing, or if this is just from before. Okay, so this is what the damage looks like really close up. I'm not seeing anything like active. Oh wait, is that something? No, it's not moving, okay. See what I noticed is that the thrips, they, when I started noticing them, I did see these black dots and I didn't know what they were. Maybe that's like one of the stages in the beginning. I don't know, I need to look again at the life cycle. This right here is some up close thrips damage. You can see this really easily with a naked eye, but it just looks like tunneling around the leaves. So yeah, here's another spot. And I don't know, I don't think I see anything. So if anyone wants to tell us what we're looking at, <laughs> Let me know. I mean, there is definitely something there, but I don't know if that is, means that there's like still something active going on. Either way, the leaf is cut off because I don't want to take the risk. This is what it looks like, like zoomed out. <laughs> but yeah, it's going in the trash. I'm gonna go wash my hands really quick just in case so I don't transfer. If there was something, I don't want it to get on my hands and then I'm touching other plants. Okay, and the last little update I have is my Billy TA is putting out this new leaf, which is really cute and exciting. This is probably also a result of the better watering. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to show that little update too. This corner is looking super cute. I really like the way that it is all decorated and shaped up. This plant down here has so many leaves on it. Really cute, look at this one. That's, that one's pretty new. And then, you know, the cabinet has also been touched by thrips. So we've got thrips damage here. This plant has thrips damage. You can see just like silvery lines. That is some, you know, from them going into the leaf. Um, but honestly, it's not that bad. I kind of thought that Anthurium would handle it pretty well. And they mostly have this right here on my Clarinervium is definite thrips damage. So if I see a leaf that is like severely affected, I've just been cutting it off, especially from these plants, just because they grow so fast in here. And I'm just like a little bit more ruthless with them because yeah, I know that they're gonna grow back. I've confidently grown them back from no leaves before. This plant has lost all of its leaves at this point and I'm not really worried about it at all. I know that it'll be fine. It has one kind of coming in, but yeah. So, so many of my plants have been affected and touched by thrips, but a lot of them have made it out the other side. I think I've only lost like two or three that were definitely from thrips. And then there were a few that I just tossed because I was like, this is not worth it. And I can tell that it has thrips and we're just gonna be done with it. So there weren't that many that like fully perished. So I feel pretty good about that. Given that I have a new baby and life is crazy and I was still able to find a way to treat all of these, I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> there were a lot of tears involved, I have to be honest. Like, I'm not gonna show myself crying on YouTube over my houseplants because that's a bit ridiculous uh, for me. <laughs> But I will say that it was hard and it was really, really stressful. But I love my plants so much and I want to do everything I can to keep them happy. Um, so the next phase is going to be just monitoring them really well and reestablishing a routine with systemic. I promise myself I will never stop using systemic again. No matter how busy I am, no matter what is going on in my life, it has to get done because the moment that I slipped up, they rushed in. They saw my weakness and they took advantage of it. <laughs> and that's 
totally not okay, but that's just what happened. So I hope that this can be kind of a beacon of light if you do have thrips to know that like, I know that I'm not out of the water just yet. I am keeping a very close eye. But it is just to say that just because you got thrips, it doesn't mean that all of your plants are going to die. I That was pretty much the only narrative that I saw online was like, once they come, you're done. And like, you can just say goodbye to everything. I was really, really upset by that. And I really didn't want that to happen. And there are solutions and there are ways to get rid of them. And are they gonna be a regular thing in my collection now? I'm assuming probably because once I've gotten a pest, I usually keep getting them besides mealybugs. And yeah, like I got mealybugs like one time and I never got them again. And it might've just been like a random fluke situation, but once I got spider mites, they kept coming back. <laughs> of course it was like way more controlled every other time I got them because I knew what to look for and like how to take care of them quickly. So I'm assuming it'll be the same with thrips if I, if and when I continue to get them. So anyway, hope this is encouraging for you on your thrips journey to know that, to know, you're just chatting, huh? Anyway, I hope this is encouraging to know if you're on your thrips journey that it's not the end and everything's gonna be okay and just to be consistent and be aggressive. So anyway, if you wanna see how I treat it for thrips, I will leave the video in the end card and also link down below. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go. Baby is very chatty, so we're gonna go hang out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.